Sure. You know, Gene Houston was the first person that put that idea out into the marketplace through writing books about the inner child. And she said it's the thing she regrets the most. And the reason she says that is because people misinterpreted what she wanted to do as we access the inner child by just kind of having it become in charge of everything, which is not the right part of us to be in charge, right? It's the part that needs to be healed. So yeah. people kind of took it to, a, you know, like people say, oh, you're wearing purple and that reminds me of my perpetrator and now my inner child's upset. And, you know, so people are always trying to rearrange the world to fit the inner child, which is, I mean, that's a, a certain level of attunement, but what really needs to happen with what I tend to call encapsulated child or inner child, same thing. Some people call it ego state work, doesn't matter what label you put on it. But the way I work with it is, first of all, to have a person see if they can access, if they can go back from the adult self to see the younger self and in and, and one trauma at a time. So there might be something that happened at five and you don't want to get them all on board at the same time. You want to be working one, one event. And sometimes like this morning, I worked with someone, it was from a whole span of years. So sometimes I'll be saying, well, from three to 10 when this happened or from, you know, five to 17 or whatever it is. But um, you're, you're just seeing if they can connect to that inner state, that traumatized state usually, and see what that age is holding because they, again, get stopped in time. And then see if you can uh, build, start building a relationship between the, ma the mature adult self and the child self. So there's a compassionate, hopefully supportive relationship eventually. And mm -hmm. then also really be seeing what that child needed or what emotions needed to be felt that nobody was there for. And the inner child was usually alone or wasn't well supported when the trauma happened, because that's why it gets stuck, right? right. If you yeah. have a lot of support, sometimes you have a terrible trauma, but you have such great support, it doesn't end up being stuck in time, it ends up getting processed. But so mm -hmm. often what happens, especially with sexual abuse or things that have kind of a taboo around them uh, to talk about, get really stuck. And so... Um, you were trying to start a dialogue, but sometimes I ask questions like, well, what does, what is that little boy or that little girl feeling? What is that eight-year-old wanting to let you know? Uh, that must have been horrible. What you told me what happened is really, really scary and, and was so unfair. What, what are some of the things that they might want? Now, sometimes I pretty much can tell what somebody would need, like they were glaringly lacking support. So I'll immediately say, well, I just wonder if any time in your life, and it can be today or even a movie you saw or a book you read, did you, have you had experience with someone that was really a competent protector, somebody that knew how to have someone's back and would really mm -hmm. step up? They wouldn't just have good attentions, but they would take action, the appropriate action. And I import that person. Um, now, sometimes it's the person's adult self, like they would be that person. Sometimes it's me as a therapist. And so often it's like a mentor they had in college or somebody they respect. And they bring that person in. And I said, now, what would you see this competent protector do or say for you at that age? And then they get to see somebody actually doing the right thing, but they're creating how that happens. I might menu yeah. a few things like, would they get you out of there? Would they duke it out with the perpetrator? Would they say stop and you're not ever going to touch this kid again? What would they do? So sometimes I menu it and then the person goes, oh, they wouldn't do that. They would do this, which is great. I'm trying to get to what they need the person to do. And then we kind of play that out. And like, what's it feel? What happens in your body? And very often there's an emotional reaction. Um, and there's just more communication. It's so brave of these inner children to show up. Welcome to the 2021 Radical Recovery Summit, presented by the Killaby Center for Recovery. This is Lynn Fraser, your moderator. This year, our theme is Feel It, Heal It, a new paradigm of recovery, featuring a diverse group of thought leaders and innovators, people who are working on the ground in the new field of addiction recovery. Go to RadicalRecoverySummit.com to sign up and watch free.